The goal of this experiment is to isolate an enantiomer of carbone and compare it with the other enantiomer. In this lab, we will be isolating the S enantiomer. You will be comparing the properties of each, such as the polarity via TLC, Bayer test, IR, and smell. Before starting, protective equipment such as safe lab attire, goggles, and gloves are mandatory. Water is to be heated on the side. This will be used later in the experiment. A large round bottom flask is clamped to the ring stand. About 5 grams of caraway seeds is added to the flask followed by water. A Claisen adapter is then attached to the round bottom flask and a separatory funnel to the top of it so that it directly drains into the flask. The still head and west condenser and vacuum adapter are then attached to the, with blue cat clips to hold them together. The water is then attached so that the water in tube is going towards the bottom opening towards the vacuum adapter and the other hose is then going empty into the drain. A graduated cylinder is then placed at the opening of the vacuum adapter and the thermometer with the thermometer adapter is attached to the sill head. The thermometer is then adjusted so that it lines up with the opening of the condenser. The water is then turned on and the round bottom flask is heated. During this time, take notes of any smells that may be present of the caraway seeds or spearmint leaves and compare between enantiomers. As the solution is being heated, hot water is added to the separate toy funnel and the stopcock is opened. This will replenish the water that is being distilled and prevent the caraway seeds or spearmint leaves from burning. Be sure to record the temperature of, the, of every 10 milliliters of distillate being collected. The water that is being collected in the graduated cylinder should be cloudy. This is due to the carbon that is being co-distilled over the water. Once enough distillate has been collected, the heat is removed from the round bottom flask and it is cooled. The seeds will then be discarded and cleaned up. The distillate is then transferred to a separatory funnel and extracted with dichloromethane or DCM for short. DCM is added to the separatory funnel and the cap is put on. The separatory funnel is then shaken with intermittent venting. The layers are then separated into separate flasks and the aqueous layer is then added back to the separatory funnel. To know which layer is which, check the density of DCM versus water. You'll find that the DCM is more dense than water so it is the bottom. The water is, is on top. 
The aqueous layer is then added back and new DCM is added and the process of shaking and extracted is repeated twice more to have three extractions total. The organic layers are combined into a single flask. That cloudy bubble that you see at the top is water. To remove it, simply add sodium sulfate and swirl the solution. If there are still water bubbles present, add more sodium sulfate. Once the solution is water free or dry, decant the solution via vacuum filtration. Clamp the Buchner funnel and attach the thick vacuum hose to the flask. The funnel and filter adapter are attached and a filter paper is added to the funnel. The vacuum is turned on and the filter paper is wetted with DCM. The extracted solution is then filtered through the funnel to re remove the sodium sulfate. Once done, the hose is taken off to prevent water backflowing into the flask and the water is turned off. The filtrate is then taken to the next step. Prepare a TLC that will contain three spots. The left spot will be an authentic sample of carbone. The right spot will be the filtrate. The middle spot is the co-spot. This means that both the filtrate and the authentic sample are spotted in the middle. This will help us determine if we successfully extracted carbone.
The solvent system for this lab is a 1 to 9 mixture of ethyl acetate to hexanes. A small amount of this solvent is added to the bottom and the TLC plate is, inside, is added inside the chamber and covered. The solvent is allowed to elute up the TLC plate. Once about a centimeter from the top, the plate is removed and the solvent line is marked. The TLC plate is then dried to remove excess solvent and observed under UV vis to see if there are any spots. The spots are then circled. You should be able to determine if the experiment was successful in extracting carbon. Also, based on the RFs, be able to determine whether the enantiomers have similar polarities. For the Bayer test, the TLC plate is dipped into a solution of potassium permanganate. The excess is dried on a paper towel and the TLC plate is dried under a hot gun. Here are the results of the Bayer test. You should be able to determine if the carvone is stained or not. You should also be able to determine if the enantiomers also stain or can be differentiated by Bayer test. Once the TLC and the Bayer test are complete, the solution is then concentrated by evaporating the DCM, leaving only the extracted carvone. The concentrated carvone is then analyzed by IR. Before taking the sample spectrum, be sure to take a good background. Then, add a small amount of carbon to the ATR optical sample and start taking the spectrum. The spectrum is then processed to find any peaks and printed. Overall, you should be able to determine whether the carbon was extracted. Also, you should be able to compare the properties of polarity, smell, IR, and Bayer test between the two enantiomers.